Hello, folks. Another episode of Burning Platform. A real pleasure to host Claire Henry. She heads SAP's analyst relations. She's always very gracious. I know it's crazy time because Sapphire is next week, but she's taken time to give us a sneak preview on what we can expect at Sapphire. And she's going to do it in 20 minutes and save you three days of actually going there and being there. She's going to cover it all real, real rapidly. Claire, thank you so much. For taking the time thank so, you Betty. are you are you already in orlando are you getting ready to leave what let's start there yeah well thanks for having me back again Vinny. i always love uh being a part of your podcast so really appreciate the opportunity and yes we are very excited a little bit busy but we are very excited to join so many customers and partners in orlando next week um i'm still in seattle uh, so, yeah, I will get down there over the weekend and be ready to go bright and early Monday morning. Well, you know, get ready for uh, hot and humid during the day. We had a beautiful, just an absolutely beautiful spring. But about two weeks ago, though, somebody turned off the switch. So. Uh-oh. I'm ready, <laughs> Vinny. And 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 uh, comfortable walking shoes. You know how Sapphire is. Yeah, so, exactly. The good thing is uh, tennis shoes are now considered fashion forward. So we're good to go, Vinny. I, I wouldn't know that. I wear, I wear sketchers. <laughs> um, so Claire, the theme for this year, Sapphire, is bring out your best. Now, yeah. you know, your challenge is you've got customers, you've got partners, you've got analysts, you've got media, you've got onlookers, people who have no reason being at something. You have a whole motley crew of attendees how do you plan to bring out the best in each one of those categories or is there one you specifically focus on what a good question Vinny. um you know first of all what a what an absolute honor to have so many people coming to sapphire and interested in sap let me just pause there and think about that for a minute like when you think about the community coming together you know, whether they're here with us in Florida or whether on in part of the virtual community, it is an absolute honor. Um, and when we think about Bring Out the Best, it fits into a brand campaign we've been running for a while right now. You know, for, you know, while SAP's purpose continues to be, you know, we help the world run better and improve people's lives. That is a cornerstone of our identity. However, we've updated our vision to say, bring out the best in every business. Um, you know, and that helps us really think about what that means. It connects to our heritage, of course, while still embracing our future and helping our customers embrace their future. And it's a very customer-centric theme. Bring out the best, right? And that's always been the cornerstone of SAP, to be very customer-centric. It's one of the real things that I think differentiates SAP and certainly what drew me to the company. Uh, so we're excited about it. And, you know, when you think about all of those audiences, we give partners the opportunity to connect with customers. They're very much a part of our journey. Um, you know, they're so instrumental in helping us think about roadmaps, strategies, and so forth. Um, the media, hopefully we give them a nice experience where they touch, connect with the community and so forth, as well as the analyst. So, you know, we do try to design it specifically. But the best part of it is all of those communities coming together. You know, Claire, a few years ago, somebody asked me about Sapphire. I said, what, what's, what's this big thing? And I go, it's a Paris air show of enterprise software. <laughs> Got to be there. Deals are struck. Big, huge deals are struck. Just It's just a great place to be. So let's talk about the keynotes. I mean, those are the, you know, those are the ones that get the most attention. I know Rise is going to get a lot of attention because you got Kristen is going to be joined by the new AWS CEO, Mike, Mike uh, Matt Garman. Okay. So talk a little bit about the keynote to the extent you're willing to give us a sneak preview. And then yeah, um, the other they, keynotes. You know, you've got plenty of other keynotes too. So Yeah. So, you know, uh, we actually have shifted our thinking on the keynotes this year. And, and it's based on a lot of feedback from folks like you, Vinny, where, you know, you had a keynote, then you had another keynote. This year, think of it as one continuous keynote with multiple chapters. So Christian and Julia will kick it off with what we consider the global keynote Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. Central Time. And, you know, really what they're going to talk about is the strategy of SAP. And the focus for them is really thinking about going back to bring out the best. 
all of the different roles within an organization that work together to help each organization be their best. So focusing on the CIO, focusing on the CFO, focusing on the you know human resource or officer, and then how do those synergistically work together? Of course, AI is so instrumental in helping connect all of those dots together. So expect a lot of AI. Uh, you can absolutely count on that. What's interesting this year in that keynote, though, they're not going to be demo heavy. And, you know, it's going to be instead snippets of interesting technology, customers and partners integrated. And yes, we do have Matt from AWS there. We're pretty excited. I think it's his first public appearance since his new role. So we're really thrilled about that. And what's interesting about um, AWS, they are a RISE customer as well as a RISE partner. And so, you know, really that firsthand experience is, is so instrumental. You might be, there might be other surprises, other partners, Vinny, stay tuned on that one. And then that afternoon, Mohammed Alam and Jurgen Mueller will do the innovation keynote. And Mohammed Alam, as you know, is a new member of our executive board leading the enterprise application group. So really excited to hear his vision. He has a strong vision about how AI and how the suite comes together. So stay tuned for that. And of course, it's, it's all dependent on BTP, which of course, you know, Jurgen absolutely drives and is so passionate about. When you think about the work that those two together, do together, you know, Mohammed's team has to engineer from the ground up to make sure we have a modular and composable architecture. And you want customers, as you said earlier, with Rise to get to the cloud, but you want them to stay in that clean core and BTP is just the strong enabler. Um, so that's gonna be really good. That's gonna be demo heavy. Expect four demos in that. And that's where you'll see all of the innovation come to life. And then the next morning on Wednesday, Scott Russell and Thomas Sauer Essig will do the customer. So how does it all come together for customers? Thomas Sauer Essig in his new board area is all about helping customers get to the cloud so they can innovate faster. And he's going to talk a lot about some new enablers we have, both from upskilling and technology to help customers shorten that uh, journey and also shorten the resource requirements to get to cloud. And Scott always, always brings on some of the just the most delightful and interesting customers. So I'm looking forward to those three. And then we close with inspiration uh, with Reese Witherspoon. And that's always a fun conversation to hear the inspiration. So so those are the keynotes, Vinny. Um, we're super excited about them. So question about Julia. Is she going to do the rowing journalist uh, gig again? You know, I actually don't know that, Vinny. I tried to find out from her last night, but she was uh, traveling, so I didn't quite, I actually don't know. So apologies that I don't know, but I can tell you that the Experience Center is very different this year. So uh, that's exciting. So last year you had, you know, farm to consume, nice walk through across several different demos and booths and so on. You know, it highlighted a bunch of their verticals. So right. give us a sneak preview of what's, this year's experience center is going to be. Yeah, last year, I think we all loved it because it was farm to table, right? And we talked about how do you go from growing something to consumer and it was ice cream, which of course, who doesn't want ice cream in Florida, right? <laughs> um, this year, it is different. It is much more on the chip manufacturing process. And, you know, staying with the themes of, you know, bring out your best, it is really, there's four chapters. I think there's five chapters to it actually, Vinny. But it's bring out, you know, starting with bringing out your efficiency. And when you think about what does that mean to bring out your efficiency, um, really thinking about how do you design from the ground up? You have to think about it right away to have so your sustainable ambitions can be met. But you want to do all of that interesting planning and prioritization. You know, only SAP really has all of those tools that that fit together. So then, of course, you've got through your planning. And the next is bring out your resilience. How do you make sure you have resilience in your in your partners and your groups for your supply chain so that you have flexible flexibilities? And how do you leverage AI to make sure that you have build in that resilience from day one? And then the next is how do you make sure it's connected? You know, um, so we'll show how the microchip process really demonstrates the connectivity of our everyone's life, you know, um, from, you know, kind of that fast pace, we all know that microchip power is just so instrumental in the fast pace of our lives. Um, and then lastly, you know, how what do you learn from all of this process, right? And so how do you transform constantly in bringing out, you know, your agility? How do you find those new business opportunities and maybe take what you've done and take them to, uh, uh, to scale, right? 
And then last, it's just kind of fun, you know, bringing out your future, you know, and you'll see kind of some inner interactive um, experiences there. So, you know, stay tuned on that one. But, you know, each person, instead of coming out with ice cream, they're going to come out with their own microchip, Vinny. Uh, so it'll be really fun. And, you, yeah, and the partnerships there are just fantastic. So, you know, we have, think, auto manufacturers, many auto manufacturers, engineering. So it's not just an SAP experience. It is very partnership, customer driven and so forth. So, uh, you know, I hope folks who are attending really take time uh, to go through it. You know, I wrote the book for Peter and Thomas last year, looked at different verticals and everything, you know, what you mentioned, the auto sector and how they were kind of eh, taken aback by not planning enough for chips, right? All the way to the fab process, you know, the huge amounts of data that generates and so on. So I'm glad you're focusing on the whole chip supply chain. Yeah. It's, yeah. And, you know, it was really fun. I, I know, you know, Andre Bechtold and team and they have, what's interesting is they have really taken some of what you're doing there, but they have done such a fantastic job over the last year, year and a half of taking these experiences and putting them online. So you no know, customer today, they're thinking about going to rise, as you said, and they want to, you know, how do I see it, you know, make sure it's the right thing for my business. You know, years past, it would have taken, you know, people would have built, come in and built them a demo now they can just go online and see it that day, see it in an hour. And so they've really taken all these experiences that you build out and made them virtually available on real code for customers. So you mentioned media. I'm sure you'll have a major fat um, press release book for them. But sh share a few, share, share a few of the announcements you're going to make. Yeah, I'm not going to share a lot, Vinny, because I think you want to publish this before we are, are the embargo lifts. But, you know, let me share themes. And I think that's the really important piece here. Um, you know, just to give people a kind of a sneak preview, I think the last I counted, there were over 70 items in the news guide. Um, and, you know, that actually speaks to something so interesting at SAP. And it's the breadth and depth of what we bring end to end. And if you think about this has been the year of AI, you know, last year at Sapphire, we announced business AI focused on responsible, relevant, and reliable. And this year we will share how that, so much of that has been delivered. I think we've delivered already over 45 um, generative AI scenarios with, you know, a great and strong roadmap for the end of the year. So there's really two themes. Um, actually, there's three themes. The two, first theme is, you know, SAP means business AI. So you're going to see a lot of the scenarios that come together to really change in the way people get outcomes, not just the way we work, but the outcomes. What do you learn and different with AI? Uh, Philip Herzig, our chief AI officer, has a fabulous session, and he's going to talk about the value equations that we look at to deliver an AI scenario. You know, you think it's really easy, Vinny. Oh, here's a scenario. Just go do it, Right. The, it's so impressive the way we go about it at SAP. So let's say you, Vinny, are an engineer or uh, someone in the field and say, hey, I think this is a great scenario. Customers use this a lot. It would be really helpful to build a generative AI scenario. Well, how do you think about that? First of all, you need to understand what how to think about the foundation model, which large language model you might want to use, or narrow, because not everything calls for a large language model. What is the outcome versus the cost of, to get that outcome? And then how do you make sure that it is fits all of those things, reliable, relevant, and responsible? And so there is quite a good backdrop of process that goes in with the company to get those. So hopefully our customers, the goal here, our customers get a scenario and it can get to work for them immediately and they don't have to do a lot of heavy lifting to get it there. So that's the first theme. How do we get there? And you're going to see them across the portfolio, across s 4 hana um, you know, Signavio, Success Vectors. I will give you a sneak preview on one of my favorites. Um, we'll announce something um, as part of our rise, you know, in partnership enablers is think about, I always used to be in the services organization. So I did large scale implementations. And Vinny, my dream was always to be 10 minutes ahead of the customer in my knowledge. Customer would ask me a question. I just hoped that I was 10 minutes ahead. And the thing that enabled me were my peers. Go to, find the information, and that made me smarter. Well, imagine if I have an AI assistant who's there with me all the time. 
to give me the latest best practice to help me, you know, get the right technical date information, the right industry piece, right? So think about that and we'll have a great announcement around that as well. Um, you want me to take a breath or you want me to keep going? You know, keep going. Don't get in trouble with Joelle. I mean, you I won't get in trouble with Joelle. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the next one is uh, really about, you know, Jewel. As you know, Jewel is our generative AI co pilot. And, you know, we announced it last September. And this year, we've already delivered in success factors S4 HANA, public and private cloud, start, um, Ariba. So an expect a lot more announcements about how Jewel really, you know, augments the interface to all of your applications. Um, and what's really interesting, Vinny, when you start to think about what Jewel can do, uh, you know, today, if I'm an S4 and I need to go to success factors, I go from one context to another context. Imagine my co-pilot just kind of navigating that context with me. So, you know, if I'm in Concur and I'm travel planning my trip to Sapphire and I want to take a couple extra days and go fishing with Vinny or something, I can, you know, I want Jewel to go check. Do I have vacation time? What's the policy on this, right? And I don't have to go from context to context to context. So super exciting to see that. And then, of course, Vinny, the last item is just the strength of our ecosystem. You already saw the AWS announcement this week. So that's public of how they're both a Rise customer and you know a partner for us on Rise, and just a lot of fantastic partnerships. Um, the ecosystem is so important today. You know, we've always had ecosystem as enablers and so forth, but the co-innovation, the co-collaboration that comes when you work across is so. Um, it helps everybody uh, get to the right solutions faster and with more efficiency. You know, one of the things I'm excited about in working with your localization team around the world. Jewel is going to allow people to navigate all the regular regulatory changes that are coming fast and furious from God knows every government in the world. So I don't know if you're going to announce that at Sapphire, but I know Jewel is becoming more and more useful across the enterprise, and very few other co-pilots can do that. So, um, and what's interesting about that, Vinny, is you know SAP today and for for many many years has done such a great job on the localization. Right. If I start my business in the United States, because you and I are both sitting in the United States, but I want to expand to, let's say, Peru or, you know, Portugal, you know, it's so easy with an SAP environment because that localization is already embedded. And so it just gives this customer the opportunity to scale. And that's at the local level as well. Well, those are all a lot of information. And what is generative AI so great at? It is getting through and understanding that. So you're exactly right. It does have, though, I, I, I don't want to um, mislead your audience. The corpus of data, the quality of data behind what you just said is really the key factor there. You would not want, you know, a co-pilot to go out and just go check out any large language model sure. and come back with an answer, right? So the quality of the data is actually so important to what you said. Especially with you're dealing with government stuff, right? So right. The range of e invoicing, the range of taxes, new taxes, and all that, just mind boggling all the changes that our businesses have to deal with. And having a you know, smart agent doing at least your first level checks, huge. So let's switch gears. Let's talk about fun. What's the entertainment plan? So, Vinny, it's always a great question. And as you know, people coming to Sapphire, I always want to know what the entertainment is. And as you know, we keep it a secret. That's part of the fun. And so we're not going to tell you. Okay, boy, you're, you're a spoil sport. Of course, you know, it's just fun once you hit the ground. Vinny, seeing friends, seeing colleagues. Uh, you know, I want to step back and talk about the experience itself. But the um, the show floor, the way it's set up, it's set up for conversation, connection, so that there's just a lot more community uh, engagement. So, um, but Wednesday night, of course, we always take the team somewhere. Nice. So given that it's so much fun, so much packed in, I still talk to folks who go, oh, you know, Vinny, we missed a three-day event. Two days is too short. They also missed the big tent. They were like, it was nice to have a global community come together. I know you, you're taking Sapphire to Barcelona and other places, but a lot of people miss that old format. So what yeah. are the chances you will bring it back? Well, I'm not 
I will never say never, Vinny, um, because of course, you know, we always are looking at and getting customer feedback. I will say though, customers, what we're seeing and how people experience Sapphire, the engagement level has gone up quite a bit year over year in the last three years since we came back together post pandemic. And what we mean by that is when you concentrate it into two days, we're seeing a lot more you know, every session has good attendance. You don't have that third day fall off. And we're finding more concentrated, great conversations. The audience has also been thankful because many people actually, believe it or not, it's hard to get away from your business for three or four days. And so they're really thankful that it's just that concentrated two day. We've also really expanded the virtual programming. So not just that you see it online, but having that virtual conversations and connections. I think we've had, you know, so many people join our community in the last year. Um, so there's just a super strong community. Then we go into Barcelona again the very next week. So they feel very connected to the original programming. Our board members are there. So they have that, again, very rich experience. Partners like that, too, because they want to make sure that, you know, they want their local teams to be with their local customers. So, you know, when when you're in Barcelona, then the you know, the German team, the French te partner teams can be there with their customers and it saves them a lot of resources. Um, and then of course we have our ServiceNow programming, which is more local. So we'll do one in Singapore and so forth. So the engagement's actually higher with this model, Vinny. Um, and so customers really do appreciate to have the opportunity to connect with more people globally because it's hard to bring so many people together from around the world. Never say never on the three-day Vinny, but I also want to let you know that there's so many other ways to experience SAP and the engagement is quite high. Well, I'm sure people, you know, this nostalgia talking where people go, I'd love the big tent again, but you know, like you say, plenty of reasons to have a decentralized model. Yeah. And what we have figured out though, is people do want to be in person, right? Like they do like that connection of both virtual and in person. So, you know, you, you know, it's just a great feeling to be there and having conversations. There's it's, it's really, as you said, Vinny, it's such an interesting community. And much as I have to speak nice about Orlando because it's in Florida, it's hard to beat Barcelona and a, a few other places you go to. So. Yeah, that's fair. That's um, fair. What, Tell me what can, can, you, can I ask you a question? Let me just pause. Let me let me oh, flip the tables on you. Can I ask you a question? Claire, you always do that. You always have a surprise. For me. Well, um only, you know, one, only one question. Well, it might be a two-part. Are you okay with if it's a two-part? So um, you know, a couple of weeks ago we had a beautiful uh retirement goodbye party for Hasso Plan. As you know, Hasso, founder of SAP. You knew Hasso. You know, do you want to share a favorite memory of Hasso and maybe send him a wish? Oh, my God. You know, I, I wrote a blog around the time where I said Hasso Plotner as storyteller. And that's mm -hmm. an aspect of Hasso that a lot of people didn't get to see. I first met uh, Hasso in 1996. I was at Gardner. And it wasn't a very pleasant start. So he walked into the room. Basically, he used to like to meet the analysts. And so there was a gardener group, eight, nine of us. And fortunately, I was at the right at the end of the room. So he walks in and he waves this piece of paper and he goes, who the F wrote this piece? <laughs> and I literally, I went this way. I tried to hide. And then, you know, his beautiful smile came out. And I said, okay, it's time to breathe again. So that was the way I first met him. But, you know, over the years, that was in 96, so probably 30 years of meetings with him, mostly at Sapphire, sometimes at Waldorf. The man was such a storyteller, right? He would, you know, I'd, and I would prompt him, I would say, you know, also your favorite characters are Peter Pan and and Tom Sawyer and tell me why. And he would, he would spend a few minutes talking about that. You know, Mark Twain, he'd become Mark Twain. Um, he'd always talk about characters in the industry, right? Even people he didn't like, he would talk about them. So he was, you know, once you got him away from just talking deep, deep technology, which most of the conversations used to be, he was a great storyteller. Nice. And, you know, a few times I would walk out of the room and the PR people would run out and say, Vinny, you cannot use this. Oh, don't you dare. So those were great. He, you know, he, he enjoyed the banter with analysts. He'd give it, he'd dish it out as much as he took it from us. 
So that, that, you know, from an analyst relations perspective, I think the man set the tone for a very healthy back and forth. Nice, nice. I love so, that. You know, uh, please pass on to him. I admire his storytelling skills, and I hope he writes a book about his 50 years in the industry. What a legend. I mean, he saw so many transitions, architectural transitions. He saw so many customers around the world. You know, he tells stories about ICI, the first customer. But, you know, he's done that with so many of them. So I, I hope he writes a couple of books. The That's industry true. needs to learn that it's not just, you know, the contemporary stuff. We, we stand on the shoulder of giants like him, and he should proudly talk about that. That's that's really thoughtful, Vinny. Thank you for sharing. Thank hey, you. The man has made all, he's enriched all our lives. Awesome. Maybe we should end on that. That's such a nice ending, Vinny. Well, unless you want to leak out a few more pieces of news, no, we can end it. <laughs> We should end there. I think it's such a nice tribute to Hasso. And it's and it really speaks to the role that SAP has played in the world and um, you know, really helping and think about people's businesses and lives. So I think that's a good ending. Well, Claire, have a wonderful time in Orlando. Like I said, you know, I wish we could keep it cooler for you. But you know, I know you I know you dress appropriately and you know, you'll have your sneakers and your smile and you'll be hosting a lot of people. So have a great sapphire. Thank you, Vinny. Thanks for having us again this year. Absolutely. And be well. <laughs>